We are back on Play It Forward. Uh, Maria Carolina Quintana, writer, director of The Bitches, Las Peras. Um, thank you for being on this show. I appreciate you being here. Thank you for inviting me. Um, it is a tough film to get through. It is, um, can you tell us a little bit about the location and um, as much as you'd like to share about the theme and the plot? Okay, uh, well, the location is Valparaíso. It's a port uh, that it's near to Santiago, the capital of Chile. And the location uh, was, uh, well, when I had the inspiration for this film, um, I, I immediately thought about my friend who is the, the, the leading character on, of the film. Uh, the actress is my personal friend. So when I started to write the, the script on my head, I thought of her and her house and she, live, she lives in Valparaíso. <clears throat> so when I was writing it, I was uh, incorporating the, the, the place and the city and, and her and the things that made, make, make her be her, you know? Yeah. So um, they are all connected, like the place that, and, the, and, the, and the plot and the things that are happening are all connected because, um, well, I wanted to, to write about something that was bothering me probably since forever, that it's like street harassment and harassment in general. So I wanted to, to, to create like a superhero that is urban and it's familiar to you, like someone that you can connect with, like someone could be your friend or, or your cousin or your sister or, or even yourself. So to empower this, this character, um, I tried to make her very like shy at the beginning and then very powerful at, at the end. And it's also based a lot on the on my friend uh, on my friend characteristics. She's very powerful, but she can be also very like shy. Even though that she's a professional actress and she's amazing and whatever, but uh, her real personality is, is like that. That's awesome. It makes me think two things. Now, on the filmmaking side, one of the things that you know we promote and that I did as well as a filmmaker is I like to script around real events and real circumstances and script around what's easily accessible. So, you know, the fact that you did that around locations that you had and people that you had to work with as actors and, you know, it was very real, it, you know, ups the production value and it makes it easier, um, more affordable um, and realistic again. So I think that's, that's really great um, technique to use um, in your writing, you know, as a writer, you can incorporate those elements and work with those elements that you have. Um, and then on the actual theme and plot, you know, it's it's a heart wrenching um, that happens everywhere in the world and certain places more so than others. Um, you know, it seemed like that particular area in the world um, is one of those places where it may happen more so than others for various reasons. Um, whether they're um, economic, cultural, um, I don't know, you know, you're more of the authority on that than I am. Um, but I'd be interested, you know, as we discuss the theme of it um, and the empowerment, you know, the self-empowerment piece, which you approach it as a, as a superhero and a crime fighter and, um, and through violence, you know, the, the superhero, um, is a vigilante superhero um yeah and um you know the morality of that is that's you know we could discuss or not i mean that's you know kind of a separate topic but i i think there is certainly that fantasy that we can all share when we have been victimized to be the vigilante aggressor whether it's for our own personal victimization or you know in defense of others and i think that that spirit everybody can connect with how did you come to you know you must have felt that in your own life that desire to for retribution 
Um, how is that developed in you um, from the onset, how, as far as you can remember? Um, <clears throat> yeah. Well, that's a very real feeling that I have had and sometimes still have. Yeah. Um, because, well, as you well said, uh, here in this um, region of the world, it happens a lot. It's like um, the rape culture is very uh, internalized in society. And even though that we are fighting for that and the feminist movement is stronger than ever, <clears throat> and there's still a lot of things to do. Like I have, I have seen some progress, I have seen some progress, but um, there's still a um, lot of things to do. Uh, personally, I'm not a violent person. I, I'm like super into, um, peaceful uh, connections and I don't know, um, but uh, I have the fantasy sometimes because justice takes a lot of time. And sometimes justice, well, actually most of the time justice has failed uh, the victims. Uh, and it's uh, creating an environment that uh, gives uh, like the bad guys uh, some sense of authority or that they own the streets and <laughs> from time to from time to time, they they let you know that like you know they are screaming things or they are doing things on the street or, or on public spaces, and it can get even worse on uh, internal spaces. You know, like homes, because um, especially with children and and uh, uh, teenagers are being victim victims inside their houses. So I know that a lot of people have the fantasy of revenge or justice or taking justice on their own hands. And um, I wanted to, to work around that fantasy because uh, it was kind of therapeutic for me. Um, uh, and I, I wanted to, to create this with as much liberty as I have uh, uh, because uh, when you work with producers or when you have a, when you earn a pound, like uh, some grants or whatever, you are representing an institution, you're representing a person or, or whatever. But this film was made uh, with just friends and with uh, trading work. Like I can work, I can write you something back or I can give you all this for that, whatever, with very little money and a lot of spirit because we all share as a group the, the same thought of, uh, we had to do something uh, to to uh, to have this space of revenge and freedom and whatever, and to see what happened. Like, what would have happened if this um, was like that on the streets? If you had someone watching you, will they still feel like they own the streets? Uh, will uh, more women go out at night um, with more freedom? What will happen? And uh, we wanted to explore that, uh, and I tried to 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 do it. Uh, like as deeper as I could, but I would love to do something more with that, like to explore even more, to do like a series or a, a feature film to expand this vision and to um, to show all the other characters are, and why they were like they, why, why they were doing what, what they were doing, you know, like why they were behaving like that. And um, yeah, I don't know if that answers. Yeah, I think it, it definitely, um, you know, addresses that, hey, there's this injustice and crime happening and someone needs to voice and say that this needs to be stopped. And I think reflecting on your film, I think irrespective of, you know, how it's addressed in your film, you put forth the work and the work is ultimately an expression of that this is not okay and this needs to be stopped. And that is not easy to do. You know, there is the incident on the train where the man is trying to stand closer to the woman and living in New York City. I was, uh, you know, partly a victim myself, you know, I saw something like that happen and it was a crowded train and I was still pretty early in New York city. I've been there for 20 years now, but I was still pretty early to riding the subways. And I, 
part of me, and it, and it could have been 10 years ago, so I was younger as well, but part of me didn't wasn't sure of what's going on. And I saw this man and he kept coming closer and backing off, coming closer and backing off this woman. And all, and then, you know, I I realized there was something going on. And all I could do was stare at him. And I stared at him. And he looked at me and then he looked back. He looked at me and he kept backing up, going forward. But I stared at him, but I couldn't voice it. You know, I was too afraid to voice something. And so all I could do is do that. And um so it's very hard to give a voice to what's happening. And the fact that you're doing that, I think, is ultimately, um, you know, the most important thing that we can do um, to address this kind of crime. And and then there's, you know, there's a host of other things, education, you know, where is the starting form? You know, where is it starting from in the home? Is there violence in the home that's breeding people? you know, that are perpetuating violence. So it's kind of a different, you know, um, discussion, but to focus on the film and the message of the film, what do you see? How do you understand? How do you interpret the message um, either as the writer or the viewer of the film now? Uh, well, first, uh, I would like to address what you were saying about the sure. voice. Yeah. It's so... It's so important. It, well, just the, a week ago, I was having a conversation with a friend, and she said that uh, she couldn't, um, she still can't uh, voice uh, something when when something wrong is ha happening to her. She freezes, and um, like she was saying this to us, uh, like trying to find some support in case we see something. Like, please take me out of there because I can, I, I get frozen. And uh, that made me remind that when, when like first uh, bad thing that happened to me on a public transportation, I was all, also the same, like I froze and uh, I couldn't scream or do, or do anything else that just moved like very slowly and like trying to get away from that. But I, I tried to scream and I couldn't. So it, it, I started to train myself, like to train um, my my brain and my, my, my voice and whatever to, to do something. And then the second time I saw uh, like a, a very similar situation than you. So I was like the witness and it was easier for me like because I wasn't um, in danger or I didn't feel the danger. And it was like with a girl that was younger than me. So uh, like something came out of me and I started to scream like to, to that guy and other people started to, to do it as well. And this girl was frozen as well because it's like this reflect that you, if you move or you do something, it, will, it can be worse. Uh, so it's like a survival instinct. Like, yeah. uh, and then, uh, and now I'm like super, like very much vigilante. Like I scream, I kick. So like once I kick out a guy out of the public transportation, like out, out of here, out here. Like it's yeah. taking the worst of me, but but I have to do it, you know. Yeah, it's, it's like, great. Defend yourself, and yeah. and I'm sure that they they are going to think twice about it. Right. So the process of my character was like that as well. Like she witnessed something, she can do anything, and then she started to train herself and her group of friends, like with physical training, and like self defense and whatever. That is something that is actually happening here. Like there are groups of self defense. Uh, on public uh, uh, parks and whatever, like mm -hmm. close groups for for females and and, <clears throat> and LGBTQ plus people, because they are also having like the same problems that we have. Like everything that is like not everything, like everyone who is feminine is, is like in danger. Like yeah. it could be in danger of violence. So um, so yeah, that's like a process of finding a voice and, and be able to scream it out and do something about it. And uh, I, I'm an artist, so this is my, my like, the way that I use my voice uh, better is uh, through writing and through creating and directing something and like doing something. So yeah, this is like my screaming, like yeah. to say, like, we have to stop this, this is happening. And the uh, reception has been very good because, um, well, there are, of course, uh, women and people who identify with, with female, um, like female identities. Uh, 
who are very emotional with the with the movie and they connect with the, the things that happen there and the their own um desires of of justice um and defense uh, so th there is this connection after the movie that is very beautiful but there's also been a lot of <coughs> of men and guys uh, approaching saying like they want to to be uh helpers as well like they they don't want to be um the ones that create the, the atmosphere of danger or, or or the ones that make you uncomfortable. They want to, to do the opposite. So like they approach saying like, now I realize what I can do to help or what I was doing wrong or whatever. So so that's been wonderful about the film. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, that's awesome. You know, it's very, I think, you know, it's it's interesting how the character and her life and her journey is in a way mirroring your own life and your journey in terms of the self-empowerment and the voice through the process. What do you think? I mean, is that the message of the movie? What do you think the message of the movie is? Hmm, well, I don't think the message is the one that is like on the movie, like go and kick some after. Maybe that's not that, but the, like the intertext of that, it's uh, to um, to change society. I know that sounds like very ambitious, but it's like um, we can do um, things to to marginalize the ones that are wronging, and to to maybe pitch them like these things that you're doing is wrong. Like what I know it's so super hard because it, it, it it's not depending on just one film. You have to have a lot of solid uh, societal movement like structure and change in education and a change in culture and what are you portraying on the on film and a series and tv and whatever it's a lot uh, but i think that from time to time it touches someone like you can say like i did this like it was wrong that would be amazing like that's the main goal i know it's super hard and maybe no one is going to admit like i was doing that very bad thing uh, but that would be like the, the main goal and the, and the message would be like for it, it's it's different for like for genders I, I i don't want to be like binary about this but um i understand that a male or like men and are like more the target you know in a sense that uh, it's like you can you can change your behavior you can be like helper or whatever <laughs> one 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 a guy said like i would like to be part of las perras like one perra like i would join this this group yeah. and because cool. they are also that like they are also um like victims as well uh, of this violence and Absolutely. sometimes they caught on it because it's like some group thing like hey we have to go and scream things and throw things and touch girls without consentment and whatever and they're like i don't want to do that you know so it's like yeah that one target and the other target is a female empowerment that's just the in general like to have your voice and, and scream it out and 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 take care of the others as well like take care of yourself and the others and we will all be better yeah, I think that's a great um, point is the union, you know, that comes that is part of the message. You know, people are uniting to do something um, to rectify a situation and it's bringing people together. And I think that's a really important message and, and it's cross applicable uh, uh, in terms of whatever it is, you know, whether it's this kind of violence or another kind of violence or another kind of injustice you know it's the union the awareness the voice and the union and you know part of what you're doing is the education piece as well how have you been changed since you made this movie um well that's great uh, well I think I I I get it out of my system somehow. Like I I feel I actually feel more empowered now 
it, it worked. <laughs> it, it worked. It worked for me. Like I feel I have backage. Like you no, know, like people backing me up. Yeah. Because when we first started thinking about the movie, uh, the feminist movement was not as big as it is today, and there was a lot of uh, backlashing to to feminists, uh, especially online. Like they were saying, like the feminazis or uh, I don't know, very bad things about feminism. So we thought that uh, by doing this, we were going to get a lot of hate back, like a lot of haters and, and guys saying bad things to us, like the same things that they were doing on the internet. But it was the opposite. Like surprisingly, a lot of uh, support and, uh, and uh, invitations from festivals and and to showcase the, uh, the movie in public spaces and and we didn't thought that we we're going to get this much attention actually it was more like a very indie underground film to to get it out of our system and to say the things that we were wanting to say like the things that we were writing on the streets and and just doing like small scale activism this was just part of it uh, so to have all this was very amazing, and also it it, um, <clears throat> it made me feel more uh, more secure about me as um, as an uh, as a director, because I had um, a previous short film that I co-directed, and uh, this was my first solo like big That's great. project. So <laughs> yeah, thank you. So it was like, yeah, maybe I can do this because I work mainly on on theater. So I'm a writer and, and director for theater and film now. Uh, but this was my my first um, project, so it changed my life a lot in a lot of ways. Because like now I I think I can do it. I know I can do it. So I'm um, I'm working more on on it and. Um, yeah. That's great. That's great. Well, I'm very happy to hear that you know it was received well and it's encouraging you to do more work and i look forward to more work from you um so please share it and keep us posted of what you're doing um the film is the bitches in english las peras and filmmaker writer and director maria carolina quintina can you help me quintana, <laughs> quintana. say the whole thing because you say it beautifully maria carolina quintana that's beautiful. I one day thank you so much for being on the show, and uh, I look forward to more of your work. Um, it was a pleasure to meet you. It was a pleasure to meet you as well, and thank you for for this amazing interview and, and very uh, deep uh, questions. Ah, uh, thank you. I appreciate it. That's that's my job. <laughs> bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.